Hello YouTube, welcome and welcome back to our YouTube channel, Village to Town, a channel that is dedicated to continue showcasing beautiful villages, towns and cities across the continent of Africa. Now as you all know, from October 31st this month, King Charles III, the King of the United Kingdoms and the 14 other Commonwealth realms is embarking on a four-day trip to Kenya. Well, this is his first visit as a monarch to a Commonwealth nation since he acceded to the British throne after his mother's death in September 2022. His visit to Kenya comes when the country is celebrating 62 years after attaining independence from the United Kingdom. The King's visit is expected to strengthen the relationship between the two countries, which has lasted for centuries. As usual, the king and the queen are expected to visit various places and meet different people as they visit the East African country. But before I give you a full itinerary of the king's visit to Kenya, kindly consider subscribing to our YouTube channel Village to Town, like the video and share it with your friends. Now back to the video. Here is the detailed breakdown of the king's expected itinerary during his visit to Kenya. Number 1. State House, Nairobi. State House is the official residence of the President of Kenya and it is a 10 minute drive from the city center. The Royal House stands on a 3 square kilometer piece of land which measures about 740 acres. At State House, the King will meet the Kenyan President William Ruto and First Lady Rachel Ruto. The Royal couple will be greeted with a ceremonial welcome at State House and thereafter they will hold bilateral talk with their hosts. On that note, it is worth noting that State House was built by the British in 1907 to serve as the official residence of the Governor of British East Africa when Kenya was a colony within the British Empire. The house was designed by the British architect Sir Herbert Baker, a major designer of some of India and South Africa's most notable government structures. Number 2. Uhuru Gardens National Monument and Museum King Charles and Queen Camilla will visit Uhuru Gardens, a commemorative park and museum in Nairobi. The garden is celebrated as the park where Kenya gained independence from the British Empire in December 1963. Uhuru Gardens is now a national monument and museum, with a public arena on a 68-acre piece of land in Langata, which is 15 minutes from Nairobi city center. It is worth noting that Uhuru is a Swahili word for freedom, and so you can loosely translate the park as Freedom Gardens. Here, the king will tour a new museum dedicated to Kenyan history. It is also worth noting that the museum stands where one of the largest concentration camps in colonial Africa sat. By the 1950s, the camp was holding up to 10,000 freedom fighters at any given time. These colonial camps were infamous for their torture cells, where many Africans were maimed and killed. At the museum, the king will face the dark history of the British colonial era in Africa. Number 3. The king is expected to lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown warrior. This special event will also take place at Uhuru Gardens, where there is a burial site for unknown warriors. The tomb of a known soldier serves as a symbolic grave for all war dead whose remains have not been found or identified. Here, the king and the queen are expected to symbolically pay their respect to all the warriors who lost their lives during the fight for the Kenyan independence. It is worth noting that Momau Rebellion, which took place between 1952 and 1960, was a war in the British Kenya colony between the Kenya Land and Freedom Army and the British. The war costed the British 55 million pounds and on the other hand it costed Africans 11,000 people. Number 4. The Nairobi National Park The King and the Queen are scheduled to visit Nairobi National Park to witness conservation work being undertaken by the Kenyan Wildlife Service. Nairobi is considered as the only city in the world with a national park. The park was established in 1946 by the British colonial government 
and it is about 7 kilometers south of the Kenyan capital. The park covers an area of about 117 kilometers squared, or 45.26 square miles. The park is also relatively small, especially when compared to most of Africa's national parks. The Nairobi National Park is characterized by wide open grass plains and backdrop of the city scrapers. At the park, scattered acacia bush play host to wide variety of wildlife, including the endangered black rhinos, lions, leopard, cheetahs, hyenas, buffaloes, giraffes, and diverse bird life. By visiting the park, the king can enjoy the park picnic sites three campsites, and the walking trails for the hikers. Number five, attending an event to celebrate Nobel laureate Wangari Madhai. The king and the queen are expected to attend an event to celebrate the life and work of the Nobel laureate, the late Professor Wangari Madhai, together with Wangari's daughter, Wanjira Madhai. Wanjira is the founder of the Wangari Madhai Foundation, which exists to amplify and advance the legacy. The main purpose of the event is to highlight the importance of the mainstreaming environment consideration into urban policy making. The King will also use this event as an opportunity to amplify messages around the crucial role of green spaces and forests in sustainable cities, thus addressing climate change as well as celebrating the legacy of environmental voices such of that of the late Wangari Maathai. It is also worth noting that Wangari Maathai was a Kenyan social, environmental, and political activist who founded the Green Belt Movement. This is an environmental and governmental organization focused on the planting of trees, environmental conservation, and women's rights. In 2004, she became the first African woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize. The last place that the king is expected to visit in Kenya is the Kenyan Marine Commando Unit. This is the first ever Kenyan Marine Unit, which is trained by the UK Royal Marines at Mtongwe Naval Base in Mombasa. The king and the queen are expected to visit the coastal city of Mombasa, which is the second largest city in Kenya. The city is 500 kilometers away from the capital, and it is a renowned tourist destination. During their visit to Mombasa, their majesties will visit Mutongwe Naval Base to witness Kenyan Marines, who are trained by the Royal Marines. The Marines will be demonstrating a covert beach landing, showing defense collaboration between Kenya and Britain in action. As indicated earlier, the newly created Kenyan Marine Commando Unit is the first ever in the country and it will serve as an elite fighting force with the ability to conduct specialized amphibious operations to weaken and disrupt threats in the region and take the fight to Al-Shabaab. Thank you for watching and kindly consider liking the video and subscribing to our YouTube channel so that we can grow together. And for those who are asking us how you can offer other forms of support, like now we need a GoPro camera so that we can continue showcasing beautiful villages and towns across the continent of Africa, find our email in the pinned comment in the comment section below. Please keep the conversation going in the comment section and tell us what you think about Kenya and the King's visit. Thank you.